Good afternoon, everybody, and happy World Ocean Days. Uh, welcome to our final Exploring Oceans by the Sea to Your Pants Hangout today. Um, it's number 26. It's been a wild day, an absolutely incredible experience, uh, connecting with students everywhere across the country, across uh, North America, and beyond. Um, today was all about celebrating our oceans, bringing leading scientists, explorers, and conservationists into classrooms to share the wonder of our oceans and why we need to protect them. Uh, my name is Joe Grabowski. I'll be your host today. Very excited to introduce Keeley Langford. So Keeley's a Canadian diver, an educator, and octopus enthusiast. She's been diving in uh, British Columbia, French Polynesia, Iceland, and Australia. And after moving to BC, she discovered the wonders of diving with octopuses, which I was very lucky to do that in Cozumel a few years ago on a night dive, and it's, uh, I know exactly what she's talking about. Um, she works with the Fish Eye Project to bring classrooms and audiences underwater, um, streaming live dives, and um, the kind of project that connects students uh, that were once like her, landlocked and thousands of miles from the ocean to an incredible world under the waves. So uh, the Fish Eye Project completed two live dives today, broadcasting uh, over YouTube and to several IMAX theaters across the country. So an amazing day of sharing uh, oceans across our country. Uh, Keely, congratulations. What a, what a great day. Thank you. It's been very, very exciting for all of us. Amazing. So I managed to catch part of uh, the afternoon session. Um, would you like to tell us just a little bit about, I know most of the classes who are joining us did manage to catch some as well, but do you want to tell us a little bit about how today went? Yeah, absolutely. A team of us went out to Ogden Point Breakwater here in Victoria B via boat, and uh, we anchored close to the breakwater, a big, thick column of rocks and concrete where a lot of animals and kelp live. We did a, the first dive at 11 a.m., and uh, that one was actually a little bit shorter than we had originally planned because the winds and the waves really started to pick up. Um, there were a number of people on the boat who, who were having a rough time. Uh, so for the safety of everyone, we moved into uh, the wharf for our second uh, screening and we showed uh, some footage of our dives and talked a lot about what you find off the coast of British Columbia. Uh, because there are so many big and awesome animals, like octopuses, uh, that can be found here in British Columbia. So we really enjoyed the opportunity to take everyone diving with us. All right. Well, I'm glad it worked out. Um, I had to battle technical issues today, but it sounds like you had the elements on top of possible technical issues. So well done for getting things sorted. Yes, there was a moment where the 11 a.m. broadcast almost didn't happen. <laughs> it was... Uh, a generator fell over. It was a whole thing, but it worked. It's been Good. awesome. Good. Well, you can plan and plan and plan, but you never know what's going to happen day of. Um, awesome. So just before we jump to the classrooms, can you tell me a little bit or tell us a little bit about the Emerald Forest, the environment that uh, you were showcasing today? Absolutely. These, really, the Pacific Northwest is known for the tall kelps that grow in around the rocks close to the shore. And the kelp, it's like an underwater rainforest. It provides home and food and protection for so many different animals. That kelp really plays a giant role in our ocean's ecosystems. And uh, we, it's what BC is known for. It's part of why we're known as the Emerald Coast. And so we really wanted to show off this amazing part uh, of Canada and all of those amazing animals that can be found there. Okay, well you did an excellent job today. Um, a kelp forest is a place high up on my diving bucket list. I've dived in a lot of cool locations, but kelp forest has eluded me so far, so it was nice to have a little sneak peek at what I'm missing. Yeah, it's, uh, there's the number of species that have been found in just one small section of the kelp alone is mind-boggling. You could spend an entire 45-minute dive in one square meter of area and keep finding new things. Awesome. Um, I'm going to introduce our classrooms now, and then uh, we'll jump over and let them ask a question or two. Um, okay. Let's see. Here we go. We have... Mrs. Thiessen's grade threes from Surrey, BC, and they've been working hard today learning about our oceans. They've joined in three or four hangouts so far. Um, Mrs. Simbelin's group, the grade twos from St. Anthony's School, 
and Kinemat. They're joining us now today. Um, we have a group. Oh, awesome. We have a group. Uh, this is really neat. ELS, a multimedia school uh, of English. Um, they're a language school in Buenos Aires, Argentina, are joining us, and they joined us for a hangout just over an hour ago, and uh, they had a good time. And um, Mrs. Simona Sioni's group, and I apologize for the name again, but I had it written down before. So they're joining us, grade sevens from Kelowna, BC, and they've been at least to three hangouts today. So there's been a lot of ocean learning going on today, which is awesome. But let's get things started. I'm going to turn on Mrs. Thiessen's microphone. If you guys have a question for Keely about the dives today, about the ecosystem, fire away. Hi, and Keely, um, do, do you know anyone, um, do you know anyone who got touched by a blue ringed octopus? Ooh, um, I don't think I know anyone personally who has encountered a blue ringed octopus. They're actually very small, um, and generally you only see the blue rings just before about the time you want to get away from it. But I certainly have heard stories from people who've been diving in and around Australia, and I actually in Australia about a month ago, and as much as I looked, I didn't find any blue ringed octopuses, which made me a little sad. Uh, but you do have to be careful, of course, with the blue ringed octopuses. I'm sure you know because uh, they can be very dangerous. Bit by them. I know what happens when you when they touch you. All right. What what happens? Um, like something happens to your throat, so then you can't breathe. It's not so serious if you go to the hospital at the right time, like before, like um, you like feel something weird happening in your throat. Then you're gonna be okay, but if you feel that weird thing in your throat, um, you're not gonna want. You're just gonna be sad. What happens next? All right. Well, yeah, definitely. Why it's always good to just observe animals from a respectful distance, for sure. So as divers, we generally try not to reach out and pick anything up. That's yeah. usually a safe way to go about things and make sure that the animals are just as comfortable as we are. Yes. All right. Looks like you have another octopi enthusiast in, in that classroom for sure. Not octopi. It's octopuses. Ah, yes. Thank well, you. The octopus community are very particular about that. <laughs> well, that's why it's good to have an expert in the, in the call. Awesome. Um, we'll see if we can swing back, but let's jump to uh, Mrs. Cymbeline's class and see if they have a question uh, for Keely. Your microphone is on. Okay. Okay. You have a question, Gabe? Um, how rare are 40 feet humpback whales? How rare? How rare are 40 feet humpback whales? How rare are humpback whales? I think the... I think it was asking 40 feet ones, so the really big ones. Oh, the really big humpback whales. Well, that's a good question. Um, I don't remember exactly how big the humpback whales usually are, uh, but in a lot of those species, it tends to be males that are bigger. It's They're very hard to measure, you know? They're usually pretty far away from us. Sometimes scientists use two lasers from a boat that they put out onto the animal, and that helps measure how big it is. Uh, and so there are probably some scientists here in British Columbia and uh, in parts of the United States that are working on track exactly how many humpback whales there are in the first place and how big they are. So maybe it's a question to work on when you get older. All right. So I imagine, do you have them migrate along the coast as they move from the warmer waters to the cooler waters to feed each year? So uh, there, there's the gray whale migration that uh, you can sometimes see here on the west coast of Vancouver Island. And the humpback whales, we tend to see a lot more during the summer. Uh, they start to come in to feed. Uh, so there, the summer is a good time to take a look out and see if you can find any humpback whales. We're going to get a reason for that. 
All right, let's visit our class in Kelowna, BC, our grade sevens. Your microphone's on. Um, um, what was your, what's the most favorite thing that you've seen diving? Yeah. Oh. Question. Uh, all right, when I was in Maria, uh, we had a dive that myself and the uh, octopus researchers, we called it our every because when we were at the surface, there was a rainbow across the surface of this awesome tropical island. And as we started to get down, a lot of surgeon fish and black tip reef sharks were swimming around us. Then when we hit the bottom, we found four or five eagle rays and they went swimming by. And then a short time after that, a green sea turtle came swimming by. Then we found an octopus that we got to uh, take, get a good look at and uh, study as part of our research project uh, and then when we were starting to come back up to the surface at our uh, sort of safety stop a group of like 25 spinner dolphins came by uh, about oh, I'd say like feet away from us and being the the dolphin swimming underwater out in the ocean like that was was pretty incredible wow that That's sounds like absolutely the world's most perfect dive that's incredible you don't hear about dives like that very often. Yeah. That's where we call everything dive, and that's part of the problem about the oceans, is there's just so many animals to see every time you're down there. Yeah, well, that's amazing. What a dive. Um, yeah. Let's visit our group in Argentina. I'll turn your microphone on. There you go. Hi. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Um, why have you chosen this sport, and what do you feel when you die? Um. Sorry, cool. Keely, your voice, your the signal just dropped out on us a little bit. Okay. Oh, there you go. You're back. So she was she was wondering why did you choose the sport of diving? Um. Um. And a lot of country. Got into diving because a lot of other. Seems like it's to go down for All right. Uh, I don't know what's happening. It looks like the tech is catching up to us again. Um, but the, we lost a lot of that answer, unfortunately. Can you still hear us okay? Uh, yeah, you might be. Uh, but. Okay, um, we we got more of that that time, but for whatever for whatever reason, it looks like there's a little bit of microphone issue on that end. But um, we're coming up on six o'clock uh, Eastern, so it was just a, a short hangout to catch up with Keely after her dives and and see how she was doing um, and hear a little bit more about the behind the scenes that went on. Um, Maybe we'll try one more question if if it'll if the tech is working for us, and maybe you can give us a little sneak peek of what might be next for Project Fish Eye. Is there? Do you guys do you guys know yet, or is it a secret? Yeah, I know that we are working on a live dive for the uh, salmon run in September. So we'll get a look at some of those spawning salmon in the streams here in BC, and because salmon is such an important and delicious species. I agree with you on both counts there. Absolutely, 100%. Um, well, that was much, much better. Um, I think the camera kind of blinked, but actually it gave us much better voice on that one. So that was perfect. So very much looking forward to catching that salmon run uh, dive in September. And I hope we can do another one of these Q&A sessions, um, either before, during, or after. Um, I want to thank our classrooms for coming in. Uh, today for catching some of the live dive and then joining us for this little hangout afterwards.
efforts in helping us wrap up World Oceans Day. And most of all, Keely and Project Fish, I want to thank you guys for what you did today to help um, promote diving, promote ocean awareness, and push it out to us landlocked folks in Ontario and other places around the country. Well, thank you so much for coming, everybody. I hope you enjoyed Ocean's Day. All right. Well, I'm going to turn the microphones on. It'll give the classrooms a chance to say uh, goodbye and thank you. And then we'll we'll wrap up for today on an amazing day. All right. It always gets loud, but it's one of the best parts of the call. Thank you so much, Keely. Uh, Mike, I know you're there helping run things as well. Thank you so much for everything you did today. Uh, <laughs> We're signing off. All right.